host Chris Durhan. Welcome to another episode of Drinks from Eddie Muller's Noir Bar. Each week we take a chapter from the book Eddie Muller's Noir Bar and we talk about the film in that chapter and make the drink associated with it. Today we're going to be talking about and making the drink of the same name, Mildred Pierce. Now Mildred Pierce came out in 1945. It was directed by Michael Curtiz who isn't necessarily known for film noir but he did make this film and uh, The Breaking Point. I'm sure there are a couple of others but um, very good film noir um, along with Breaking Point which was kind of lesser known but a really rock solid film noir um, had a very very di diverse career uh, made some very good horror films very early on in the 30s uh, made uh, some adventure movies with uh, Adventures of Robin Hood and Captain Blood and Yankee Doodle Dandy. So he was kind of all over the place with, with the type of films he would make. And I'm trying to think. There's one other that I'm not thinking of right now. Oh, Casablanca. Yeah, he made that one. So you've probably heard of that one as well. Actually, you've probably seen um, Mildred Pierce. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the the plot itself. Um, the, the cast is really great in this. Um, when it comes down to it if, it, if it's a choice between Team Betty and Team Joan, I probably will always come down on the side of Team Betty. But Joan Crawford is also very good, and I like her a lot. So it's, you know, even the, the, the Team Joan, Team Betty is kind of a tough call for me. Um, she's really great in this film. Um, she definitely deserved the Oscar she got for Best Actress here. Um... Let's see, who else do we have? Jack Carson has uh, one of the male leads. Uh, who Now, Jack Carson is kind of a comic actor. He often starred in comedies or played kind of the second lead in, in more serious films, and that's what he's doing here. Um, when it comes down to it, I actually kind of like Jack Carson better. I mean, he is very good and very likable and funny in comedies, but I think as an actor, I like him better when he's playing more serious, like in this film and in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Um, rounding out the, the male leads here is Zachary Scott, who plays the kind of worth, worthless, uh, rich boy, good-for-nothing uh, man that uh, Mildred Pierce eventually ends up marrying. Um, and then you also have Eve Arden. Now, Eve Arden is great, and this is one of those films that she is just absolutely on point and and she just steals every scene that she is in um let's see who else do we have we also have butterfly and the queen in a very small role um it's i think the third to last uh hollywood studio movie that she made before moving on to television and radio in the four, late 40s and 50s um in not a good role for her. she plays a maid in fact that's one of the reasons she kind of left hollywood was that she kind of assumed that you pay, played maids to um to put in your due, dues and then you would get some better some better roles but you know if you're a person of color that never happened and that's exactly where it was probably the one of the few things i don't like about this movie is one spot where they have butterfly mcqueen answering the phone and she just she picks it up like she doesn't know which end to talk through which i'm sure white audiences in the 40s thought was funny but right now in 2024 that's pretty cringeworthy so um and then that brings us to Anne Blythe and Vita. Now, Vita is, plays Mildred Pierce's daughter, who is a spoiled brat from the beginning to end. And as the movie progresses, she becomes more and more of a brat. In fact, if you were to list all the top cinema spoiled brats, Anne Blythe as Vita would be like the top of that list i can't i mean i can't even imagine anybody even rivaling that um which brings us to our drink the um the mildred pierce now the mildred pierce uh is a uh, mescal drink it's a newer drink but named after appropriately mildred pierce um eddie muller says that probably you wouldn't find this drink in uh the lounge in one of mildred pierce's restaurants um 
but you might find Zachary Scott with a bottle of mezcal making a drink very similar to this. So, so there you go. Um, we're going to take a short break uh, and come back and make the Mildred Pierce, and I hope you stick around for that. Thanks. And we're back. So we're, this is a shaker drink. So we're going to start by loading up our shaker with some ice. I got some new ice tongs for Christmas, which are less comically large than the ones I have been using. And let's see. So this drink starts with Vita Mezcal. So we're going to start with three quarters of an ounce of our Vita Mezcal. There we go. And then we're going to do three quarter, quarters of an ounce of Aperol, which is a um, kind of a aperitif. Um, it's very bitter flavored. So we're kind of going for all of the senses here. So we've got, well, we've got our booze sense with the, with the, the mezcal. We've got our bitter. And then we've got three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, which will be our sour. And then for our sweet, we have Pomplamoose liqueur. Now the book recommended Gifford Pomplamoose, which I was able to find and it costs like $30 a bottle. And right next to it on the shelf was St. Elder Pomplamoose pink grapefruit liqueur for a uh, $14 a bottle, so uh, here we go. All right, so there it is. And it's the only drink in this book that requires it, so I'm going with that. So we're gonna do this, get our shaker top, and give it a good shake. Now, Eddie says that you can do this two different ways. You can either do it in a chilled coupe glass or in a cocktail glass with one big block of uh, ice cube. So we're gonna strain, we're going the uh, old fashioned glass route. Gonna strain this into here. And then for the garnish, we've got an orange peel. So. We're going to squeeze the orange peel over it and kind of wipe it around the lip of the glass and drop it in. And we have the Mildred Pierce. Oh, wow. That's, that's really good. Um, for my own personal taste, I might back down a little bit on the Aperol. As I think I'm getting a little bit more bitter than maybe I would like, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's really pretty good. It is well balanced because you're not you're not being dom dominated by by any of the flavors. You've got you've got a little sweet, a little sour, a little bitter, a little booze, and uh, you're pretty good to go. So from a booth in the back of Eddie Miller's Noir Bar enjoying our Mildred Pierce. I'm going to say cheers. Cheers. Hope you're joining me next time.